Addiction is one of those things that doesn't discriminate. It doesn't matter if you're rich or poor, the colour of your skin or where you're from. It's evil, insidious, a toxic concept that enslaves you in shackles and chains. At its peak, you don't even recognise yourself anymore. Unable to face the reflection of the broken, empty eyes staring back at you in the mirror. The vicious cycle of self-destruction, oh so bitter, oh so sweet. At the time, you fail to realise it's not only you that you're hurting, but all of those who love and care for us deeply. Yet our thoughts clouded, our state of mind altered. We live in the moment, day by day, sentenced to our own private mental prison, doing what we can to ease the pain, just a little, for that moment, temporary relief and numb comfort, losing ourselves and our loved ones to this disease. It doesn't really matter what my name is, but I'm one of you in recovery, but above all, I am human. I grew up in Sydney CBD, the finest city in the world, if you ask me. At age nine, I found out that there's really no place like home. My grandparents who lived in Turkey became unwell. Returning to Turkey with my mother and brothers, my dad stayed in Australia to support us financially, and the next three years of my life would change everything. My parents just couldn't make it work in two different countries and ended up getting a divorce, and my stepdad was introduced into my life. For three years, we were not allowed contact with my father, and my mum made the mistake of marrying this monster who stole my childhood, my mum, and my innocence from me. Violence, abuse and neglect became the norm and his idea of discipline was one without law. The impact violence has on the soul, it changes the way you perceive the world in yourself. It wasn't until a neighbour reached out to Dad and explained what she was hearing that he flew to Turkey and paid out my stepdad for $5,000 for my brother and I each and with that he would let us leave. I never knew why but I had this tendency to harm myself, cut after cut. My grades were good, but my behaviour suggested otherwise. Anxious, cheeky, troublemaker, suspension after suspension. I remember doing a class on drugs, all different types and classifications, and I thought to myself, how can a little pill change everything? My curiosity got the better of me, and I was now on a mission. First, like many, I was introduced to weed at 14, and at first it was recreationally. Then I found myself smoking alone and it became an everyday thing. Eventually, I it felt like I needed something else. My anxiety at its peak, struggling with panic attacks, my GP at the time prescribed me Xanax. My teachers knew that I was ready to drop out at around year 10, but they knew that I was bright, so they got me into a scholarship which was an incentive to continue year 12, and I decided I wanted to study social work at uni. Once my GP would no longer prescribe me any Xanax, I searched elsewhere, and this is how I met my first love in Year 10. The first time I met him, he turned up at Town Hall Station with a mullet that was probably brewing for around six years and a goon sack, and I had the sesh. The very next day, we found ourselves at Granville Station. He put a pipe in my mouth and said, smoke this. I didn't even know what it was that I was smoking, but I remember the train ride home thinking I was invincible, something like the Hulk. My addiction progressed into something more than I could have ever imagined. It was July 2015. I found myself on YouTube looking up how to find a vein. This was my first experience with heroin. Eventually, it didn't matter what I was using, as long as I had something to alter my reality. I had forgotten how to breathe. My mental health deteriorated as I hurt my family and peers, and none of it was intentional, but it's like you lose sight of who you are when you're using. The heart goes cold. I've had three suicide attempts. I've got six lives to go, I guess. But it was after the latest suicide attempt that I knew that I had to get help. That first love I spoke about earlier, funny enough, was the one who introduced TCF to me. When I finally got the green light from TCF, I thought this is the time to change my life. Eventually, that darkness I was so used to that kept me confined yet sheltered was suffocating and it was time to find the light. The first part of the journey started at DMP. I remember my intake day. I was finding it hard to breathe and it felt like I had a thousand horses running wild in my chest. My legs buckled as I tried to walk through the door as I said my last goodbyes to Dad. I had no idea what to expect, pulling up to this property on a farm. Complete different scenery that I was used to. 
tranquil and serene, I looked at the horses, the occasional wombat, kangaroos, leeches, ponies and all other creatures and such and took it all in. The staff at DMP are simply stars. It's like you have a whole team of professionals in different roles literally attending to your every need. Nurses, youth workers, housekeepers, Dr Frank, psychologists, it's around the clock care that truly is holistic and detox is probably the hardest first step of the journey. It's that uncomfortable feeling where you're sick and everything is still a blur. I had this smoker's cough and I remember Lorraine making me a cup of tea and found some big lollies to soothe my throat and it didn't seem like much but it meant the world to me. Mama Ken would be making waffles in the morning and all sorts of treats. Janelle and Mel always there to have a good chat and Charlie playing his guitar and gardening to name a few who, name, who made my time that much better. After doing my time in detox, which is literally like a bougie private ensuite, it was time to start the residential program. Again, no idea what to expect. Farmer Tim gave me a grand tour of this beautiful farm and I was taken to my new home for the next three months. To my surprise, the program was literally like going back to school with art, music, woodwork, education and living skills. The Shred Shed, aka the gym, DBT groups and our own appointed psychologists. All residential staff once again incredible and shout out to my rehab mums Lisa, Nikki and Norma for always making me laugh and amazing food. Tamara always putting in 100% as well as our welfare officer Emily who has the best taste in music. Evenings consist of laughter, pool games, movies, chores, footy games, campfires and damn good food. The weekend filled with off-site activities and supportive aftercare workers for once the program is complete. I couldn't have asked for a better place to start my new life. Since being at TCF, I'm constantly surprising myself and I'm a very different woman now to when Dad first drove me here when I was ready to jump out of the moving car door. I'm learning that I'm stronger than I could have ever imagined. My plans after completing the program is to finally finish my social work degree and get into the field and do what I was supposed to do. TCF has taught me the skills to live a normal life, a life free from drugs and alcohol, and honestly, I'd probably be six feet under if it wasn't for the farm. To the donors and supporters of Triple Care Farm, don't stop. You are changing thousands of young people's lives. You saved mine. A very wise man who goes by the name of Farmer Tim once told me, the darkest hour is just before dawn. I couldn't agree more as the hardships we endure shape who we become. And to all my fellow students, past, present and future, hang in there. Keep your head up and don't stop trying. Put your hand up and ask for help. It's there. You are not alone. And to our families, thank you for being so patient and supportive in our darkest hours. We are only human and we all have shortcomings. We can only ask for unconditional love and understanding and with that we will return home.